this is Kim Hargrave from Adventist and Pequot Seacoast Nature Center and welcome to our Facebook live event. This morning we're going to be talking all about frogs. Here in Connecticut we actually have 10 different species of frogs and they all are amphibians. So just in case you're not sure what the word amphibian means, it actually means two lives. And when we think about frogs, you would realize that amphibians do have two lives. They spend one life in the water as a tadpole and one life more on land as an adult animal. And so that's why amphibians have their name. Now what we want to do today is we want to introduce you to some of the frogs that live here at the Nature Center. And we have several different species, but I thought I'd start with one of my favorites, which is the gray tree frog. So just give me one second to get them on out. And I have our gray tree frog sitting on a piece of bark. Do you see how well camouflaged he is? One of the coolest things about these tree frogs is they can actually change color. Now they can't change to red like my sweatshirt or blue or purple or any of those colors, but they can be brown or gray or green depending on what they're sitting on. So actually when I got this tree frog out this morning, he was sitting on the glass of his tank and he was a super light, light gray color. And I stuck him on this bark and that was about a half hour ago and now look how dark he is. He also has a pattern on his back and that helps him to camouflage into whatever he's sitting on. So it usually takes, like I said, about a half hour or so for them actually to change color. You might have noticed he just squirted some water out on me and that is a frog's defense mechanism. All right, he's hoping that he squirts that water out and that maybe I'll put him down, but I'm not going to do that just yet. All right, if you take a look at him, I'm going to take him off the piece of bark and I'm going to put him on my hand so you can actually see him better. One of the things that I really want you to notice about him is his sticky toes. He's got round sticky toes that he's using to climb around my hand and that's how he climbs up the side of a tree. And these uh, frogs usually go up about 20 feet into the trees and then they start crawling. Now we have another tree frog that lives here in Connecticut as well called the spring peeper and you might have heard this frog calling already this year. So on nights that it's about 50 degrees or so, we're hearing the spring peepers call. But they're a lot smaller than this guy. They're only the size of my thumbnail. All right, so super tiny frogs making those loud calls. Gray tree frogs, on the other hand, actually don't start calling until about June. Late May, early June is when we start hearing them make their sounds from the tops of the trees. Kim, we have a question from Brooke who would like to know if we have any see-through frogs. We don't have any see-through frogs here at the Nature Center. So um, we'll probably share a video later on though that's going to actually be an x-ray of a frog swallowing its food. So take a look out for that. All right. So this frog right here, he can, she can climb up or he can climb up and it's hard for me to tell the difference whether this frog is a boy or a girl right now. See how it's climbing right up my sweatshirt and sticking on? All right. And that is what they are most known for. They also are good jumpers and they will stick to things like the side of your front door and places like that. Especially if you have your front porch light on, that's attracting bugs and it might attract that frog down to eat some of them. Ooh, right. Emma would like to know if frogs blink. Yes, they do. And they actually have more than one eyelid. They have a clear eyelid that they can put over their eyes that works as goggles for when they're swimming underwater. So Ooh. pretty neat. So even though this frog has sticky toes, it does still have webbed back feet. I'm not sure if we can get in there to see the webbed back feet. And it uses those for when it's swimming in the pond, getting ready to mate and to lay its eggs. Just so that you know, gray tree frogs have tadpoles with orange tails. So if you ever catch a tadpole with an orange tail, you're probably looking at the gray tree frog tadpole. Um, Patrick would like to know how high this type of frog can jump. So they're not as good of jumpers as some of our other frogs, but they can definitely jump, you know, four or five feet. All right, I'm going to put our gray tree frog back down in this container and I want to get out another frog for us that's very, very different than our tree frogs. This next frog I want to get out is the biggest frogs that we have here in Connecticut and they are the American bullfrogs. So American bullfrogs are prevalent in all of our ponds in the area. They cannot climb trees at all like our gray tree frog, but they are amazing jumpers. They can jump up to 12 feet 
and they sometimes can jump as high as six or seven feet. And I've even seen pictures of them scaling chain link fences. So they're pretty amazing frogs. Brayden would like to know what makes frogs so sticky. Uh, right, so it's their skin. So remember that frogs are amphibians and so their skin is not scaly like a reptile. And as their skin starts to dry out, it makes that feels that you get that sticky feeling. So one of the things that I look for with our frogs is if I feel like their skin, especially with our bullfrog, is starting to get a little sticky, I know that it needs to go back into the water. One of the things that I want everybody to notice right now is how I'm holding this frog, because it can be fun to go and catch frogs outside, but you always want to be very gentle with them. Notice that I'm not holding him around his belly at all. Frogs don't have a good rib cage, and so if you actually squeeze them too much around their belly, you can really hurt their internal organs like their stomach and their heart and things like that. So you always want to be nice and gentle when you're holding them, holding it very loosely around its legs. Sometimes when you pick up a frog, they scream. And that doesn't necessarily mean you're hurting it. That's its way of saying, put me down. And when you don't, it'll, it'll stop screaming and you'll know that you're not actually hurting it. We have one screaming frog at the Nature Center's pond and every summer our campers will catch it and everybody gets a little bit surprised. Now, one thing about bullfrogs is you can tell the boys from the girls. And the way you tell is by looking at the size of their ears. And the ears are this, um, this circle right here on the side of their head. If that circle is bigger than their eyes, it means it's a boy bullfrog. The boys also tend to have a yellowish chin. So you can see that right here on this bullfrog. So I'm holding a male bullfrog or a boy bullfrog here at the moment. All right, check out those long legs, those big webbed feet that it has. Not only are these frogs good jumpers, but they're amazing swimmers and they're gonna push through the water with those webbed feet right there. Now, bullfrogs are predators. All right, they will eat anything that they can fit in their mouth. And it's kind of interesting to think about that, how something that has no sharp claws, no sharp teeth can eat so many different things. It'll eat something easy like a worm or a cricket, but it'll also go after big spiders and even birds. In some parts of the country, these guys will even eat scorpions. All right, so these guys are absolutely incredible. They have very, very large mouths. I'm actually gonna show you a skull from a bullfrog right here. Look how big that mouth is right there. All right, so if they can fit it in their mouth, they are gonna eat it. And what they do is they get that food in their mouth and it's still kind of alive. It's still wiggling around. So I want you to imagine he's caught a worm and that worm wants to get away. Their tongue is sticky, so that's kind of helping to hold it in place but it's still gotta swallow it down into its stomach. So this is what it does. It uses its eyeballs, all right? So think about it. A frog's eyes are right on the top of their head and they're round like a marble. And that eyeball is sitting right up here and what it does is it closes its eyes really tight and when it does that, the eyeball sinks right down into the roof of the frog's mouth and it helps to push the food down into the frog's stomach. If you were a frog and you took your tongue and you licked the roof of your mouth, just like I'm doing, you would be able to feel the bottom of your eyeballs. All right, so that is a pretty cool thing about our bullfrogs right here. Cool, we have a question from Emma who wants to know why do frogs get calm when you lay them on their back? So they actually get calm because they're having trouble breathing. So when you put a frog on its back, it can't breathe that well and that's why it calms down. So it's really never a good idea to do that because you're actually kind of hurting the frog a little bit. All right, so we always try to hold a frog properly and, and not rub its belly or anything like that to keep it calm. And what sort of things eat frogs? We have a question from Caroline. Mm, lots of things eat frogs. Now, while bullfrogs think they're the kings of the pond, there's a lot of things coming after them. One of the biggest ones for them is birds, raccoons, and snakes. One of the ways these guys will defend themselves though against a snake is they will take in a big gulp of air and it makes their bellies expand. And when their bellies expand, their bodies look so big that the snake sometimes will take a second look at them and go, oh, that, that's too big for me to eat and go on to something else. The other thing is frogs have a bad taste in their skin. 
And so sometimes animal might take a, a you know a lick or something like that and go, eh, that's kind of gross and let it go. But otherwise, these guys will fall victim to great blue herons, river otters, possums, raccoons, skunks, pretty much, you name it, and they like to eat frogs. The other thing about frogs, especially bullfrogs, is they'll even eat other frogs. Now, one other important thing. All right, we're back. Excellent, sorry about that. All right, one other really important thing. Hi everybody, it's Kim from the Nature Center again, and we're still talking about frogs. And what I was saying was, when you're holding a frog, you wanna make sure your hands are very muddy and naturally dirty, no germs. Um, and what we're looking to do is that frogs are really very sensitive to sunscreens and oils and soaps and hand sanitizer and can actually go into their skin and hurt them. So you want to be really careful when you're holding frogs. Now, I held two different frogs already, a bullfrog and a gray tree frog, and I purposely am holding this frog as my third one because it actually has a little bit of toxin in its skin. And we're going to see, he's a little bit slimy and slippery it looks like this morning. And so this frog right here is the pickerel frog. And pickerel frogs are actually a pretty common frog here in Connecticut. And you, most people who see them go, oh, it's a leopard frog. But actually leopard frogs are endangered. Do you hear the sound he was making? <laughs> All right, he's telling me to put him down. Leopard frogs are endangered here in Connecticut, but pickerel frogs, on the <laughs> other hand, are not. And, Great example of their jumping just yes. there. <laughs> and they have squarish spots right there. You can see their square spots on their backs, where leopard frogs actually have round spots. Now, if you see a pickerel frog, it's absolutely fine again for you to pick it up but you don't want to rub your eyes or touch your mouth or anything like that after doing it. And if your dog gets into a little tussle with a pickerel frog, it might taste bad and it'll kind of be shaking its head and stuff like that. But your dog will end up being okay from pickerel frogs. Now, the other thing about pickerel frogs is that they will leave the ponds and they hop around in your yard and things like that. So they love wet meadows. And so I often see these in my yard, hopping around in my garden, and I, I really want them there. They're eating bugs and things like that. Um, if you catch a pickerel frog and you catch another frog, like a bullfrog or a green frog, you don't ever want to leave them in the same bucket of water though, because that toxin can actually spread and hurt the other frogs in that bucket. So keep the pickerel frogs by themselves. Okay, we have a question from Brayden who wants to know how frogs swim and jump. All right. So they swim really well because of those webbed feet that they have, and they can jump because of the way their legs are made. Their legs are always coiled like a spring. This is gonna look kind of silly, but I'm gonna get down right like this, and you see when I go like this, I'm gonna be able to jump a lot better than just going like this, like a regular person with straight legs. Being coiled like that means they're always ready to spring into action. We also have a question from Cristiano who wants to know, can frogs sleep with their eyes open? So I have never actually heard of them sleeping with their eyes open, but they probably always have one eye open so that they're paying attention to things. And we have a question from Lauren who wants to know, where do bullfrogs live? So bullfrogs live in freshwater ponds. Um, so they usually, they can't handle any salt water. So you won't see them in our salt marshes and things like that, but pretty much any freshwater pond or lake, you will have them. And here along the Eastern half of the United States, they're native all the way down to the South. But if you are living out in California or Arizona or New Mexico, bullfrogs are not a native species out there. And they were actually introduced and they um, are causing a problem by eating a lot of the native frog populations there. All right, I have one more type of frog that I want to show you. All right, and this is the American toad right here. All right, and the American toad is still considered a type of frog right here. And it is also letting some water go on me right there to let me know that she's a little bit unhappy. 
Now, one of the ways that I know this toad is a female toad is because of her size, all right? Female toads are a lot larger than male toads. And these toads right here, usually in about May or so, they'll start getting ready to mate and lay their eggs. And they can lay their eggs in ponds, in vernal pools, in streams, and even in puddles. And instead of having their eggs as one big blob, their eggs are laid in little strings. And what happens is when their tadpoles hatch out, they're tiny and black. And if their pond dries up, so especially if they're in a puddle, they can actually speed up their metamorphosis. They can go from being a little tadpole to being a toadlet or a baby frog within two weeks, which is absolutely amazing. Now you see all these bumps on this toad right here. That doesn't mean I'm gonna get warts all over my hands. You can't actually get warts from touching a toad like this. All right, now there is two very special bumps that she has right behind her eyes. There's one and there's two. And those two bumps actually can secrete or have a little bit of a toxin or a bad tasting substance come out of them. So if something was trying to eat her, she'd let that go and it would taste pretty bad and a lot of animals would actually just let her go on her way. Now toads love to eat worms and they love to eat insects as well. I, one of my favorite things about this toad is her eyes. Take a look at her eyes. She's got these little gold lines on them and I just think they're so pretty. And where do American toads live? So American toads, you usually see them around um, yards, the forest floor, um, just about anywhere. American toads are, are pretty common in the area. I actually wanna play the sound of them because a lot of people don't realize that toads make this amazing sound and they think that that sound is a bird. Now remember, when you hear any frog making the sounds, it's actually only the male frogs and the male toads that are making those sounds, trying to attract females to them. All right, so half the frog and toad species, all the girls, they're all being quiet, just listening for those different sounds right there. All right, the other thing about toads is even though they spend a lot of time on land, they also have webbed feet for when they go down to the pond and go swimming there. You see that. Emma would like to know, can all frogs freeze during the winter and come back in the spring? No, that is actually unique to very specific frogs. So an American toad, for example, actually goes down into a deep burrow and does not freeze for the winter. The gray tree frog that you saw does freeze for the winter. So gray tree frogs, spring peepers, and wood frogs here in Connecticut are the ones that do that. And so, they freeze, but their actual cells don't. And so what their cells do is they have a high glucose level or lots of sugar in them and it works as an antifreeze. So those things don't freeze, but they do get ice crystals in their belly and around in other parts of their body. And their heart does stop functioning and their brain stops functioning. So it's absolutely amazing how they thaw out. Bullfrogs and pickerel frogs are in the pond and they will actually go underneath the leaf litter at the bottom of the pond and survive there for the winter. So different frogs have different survival strategies depending on where they live. Ethan would like to know if you have a favorite kind of frog. Oh, you know, I kind of go back and forth, but I would say my favorites are the gray tree frogs. I just love how they can climb up in the trees. I love how they hold on. I love how they have yellow stripes underneath their legs as well. So. What is the difference between a frog and a toad from Lauren? All right, so the difference between frogs and toads has to do with their skin. So they're both amphibians, they're both considered in this bigger group of like a frog family. But when you look at that skin, those drier bumps right there actually is what's gonna differentiate between a frog and a toad. We have two technical toads here in Connecticut. We have the American toad and the Fowler's toad. And then we have another frog species who's named a toad. It's called the spadefoot toad, but technically it's a primitive frog and not a toad. And that's because when you touch it, you're not gonna see all these big bumps on it right here. What I found 
is with Fowler's toads and American toads is they're a little tricky to tell the difference between them and sometimes they even mate and so you get a hybrid that's like a mixture of a, a American toad and a Fowler's toad. Um, but they definitely make different sounds. So we'll send a link later on too that has some of the different sounds of American toads and Fowler's toads and all of these different frogs for you to hear and so you can be listening for them this spring. The other great thing is to go for a walk around the ponds right now. I'm starting to hear or and see some of our bullfrogs and our green frogs here at the Nature Center. They're being very quiet. They're kind of hiding. They're just waking up from the winter, but they have been out. Um, our wood frogs have already been out and another day we'll talk more about them. And they've actually even already laid their eggs. We know that the spring peepers are out right now. And as the season progresses, we're going to see more and more of our frog species. How many species of toads are there from Riley? So here in Connecticut, we only have two. I'm not sure how many toad species there are around the world. There are, I would say, you know, probably at least 100 different species from around the world. We have another great question from Emma. Can toads give you warts? No, they cannot give you warts. So even though they have all of those bumps, those bumps are not the kind of things that give us warts, which is a great thing because I would have a lot of warts on my hands if that was the case. <laughs> Can you give us tips one more time for anyone that's just tuning in for um, being careful with your hands before you pick up an amphibian? That's right. And so one of the things is, is, I always like to say, if you're down by the pond first and you dig through the mud in the pond, that is when you can hold a frog because your hands are all covered with mud and covered with dirt. So right now, when we've all been using lots of hand sanitizers and lots of soaps, you definitely don't want to be picking up frogs. Pick up your frogs when they're dirty with mud and soil. That's when you want to do it. So if you're flipping over logs and you're looking underneath the logs and your hands get all that kind of dirt on, that's the perfect time to be able to touch a frog. Otherwise, you really don't want to. And at this time of year, with our frog ponds, our, pond, our frogs at the pond, I would recommend just, just taking a close look and not even trying to pick them up or touch them. All right, because remember, bug spray, hand sanitizer, soap, any of that residue, even when you think you've rinsed it all off, all right, if you touch the frog, it's actually like getting soap in your eye. It can really, really hurt them. So we want to be very, very careful with those kinds of things. One other question before we sign off for the day is, do frogs bite? So they technically can bite, but they don't have any teeth, at least our frogs, and so it won't hurt at all. So, and if you noticed, you know, some of my frogs weren't too happy about being picked up, but none of them actually tried to bite me or anything like that. So frogs, you don't need to worry about frogs hurting you so much. It's more that you might accidentally hurt them. So you want to be super gentle. So when you are out and about this evening, and we're supposed to have some little bit warmer temperatures today, make sure you listen for the spring peepers. I've been hearing them call pretty much any day that's over 50 degrees. We should be hearing them. And take a look as you go by the pond, see if there's any bullfrogs or green frogs that have woken up. So on Saturday morning, Rob will be back and he's going to have one o'clock. Oh, sorry. Be right at one o'clock. Um, Rob is going to be here with Kingsley again. So you can have a chance to meet our short-eared owl and hopefully we'll see you then. Thanks so much for tuning in.